Grace and peace to you this day from the Lord our God. My name is Pastor Caleb and welcome to worship today, the worship video for Park Church in Streeter, Illinois on July the 12th, 2020. Now, uh, this week we are resuming in-person worship at Park Presbyterian Church uh, in Park Place with social distancing restrictions in place. But as you can see, we will be continuing the worship videos here on YouTube and you know, load up, load to Facebook and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, but I might, I may try and transition recording the recording venue to Park Place, the space where we will be uh, worshiping at the church in person. Um, just kind of bring you a little bit closer to the action. Though I will say this, this order of service is uh, the same as you're going to find if you are attending worship in person. Um, only difference being that in person we're going to have a little more music, and I have not yet figured out how to incorporate music into this videos. But I'm going to try and figure that out to uh, have a little bit more worship, have some music uh, in our worship videos going forward. So uh, this may be the last time that you see me here in front of this weird rock wall in my house uh unless you really like the rock wall if i get a bunch of comments uh to, to stay recording here and keep the rock wall then i'll do it otherwise next week's video you will probably see me at park place our venue that we'll be uh, worshiping in for the foreseeable future so now that that's out of the way let us prepare our hearts and our minds to worship god this day here are the words of our call to worship from psalm psalm 65 Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who answer prayer, to you all flesh will come. When deeds of iniquity overwhelm us, you forgive our transgressions. Happy are those whom you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, your holy temple. My friends, each of us have been wounded by sin, the, the force of sin that corrupts all creation, that moves us away from God to sin against God, to sin against one another and create uh, pain in other people's lives and even create pain in our own lives. We bear the wounds of that sin, but Christ is the great healer. And Christ says to all that will come to him will be healed and made new, forgiven and made children of God. So rejoicing in the forgiveness and the new life that we have in Jesus Christ, let us go to the Lord in prayer and confess our sins boldly. Let us pray. Lord, too often we speak without pausing to seek your wisdom. We assume our own goodness and we fail to question our limited knowledge and understanding. We hurt others with our hasty, often well-intended words and actions. We falsely believe our ways are your ways and condemn those who disagree with us. In this tumultuous time, turn us toward you. Remove the scales from our eyes and give us ears to hear your guidance. Do not let our need for earthly approval sway our commitment to take up our cross and follow Jesus. Forgive our failings Take our faltering attempts at faithfulness and use them to lead us to your paths of righteousness. This we lift to you and the confessions we hold secret in our hearts. Amen. Hear these words of assurance from Romans chapter 8. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit of life in Jesus Christ has set you free from the law of sin and death. Friends, believe this astoundingly good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven and made new. Amen. Now let us, uh, before we go to the reading and the proclamation of God's holy word, let us go to God in prayer to seek the illumination of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, you sat with the writers of these holy texts and you imparted your word into them. You gave to us the words of life. And you have preserved it enough so that we can truly call these, these writings your very word. 
your written word. Help us, O Lord, as we go to this word, that it be opened to us, that it grow in our hearts and form our minds and shape who we are and bring us more into the image of Christ our Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our reading today comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 10 through 13. Listen now for the word of God. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I propose, and succeed in the thing for which I send it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, before we get into the message today, I invite you to take a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil or your notes app on your phone or whatever you got. Use something to take down notes and uh, take away something from this message today. Anything that, you know, something that, um, that maybe you struggled with, something that challenged you, something that made you angry, or something that lifted you up, that made you feel something wonderful. Because I guarantee that God is going to speak to you at some point in this message today. You know, the other day I was out in my front yard pulling weeds and the uh, the UPS truck pulled up in front of my house with a package for me. Driver comes out of the truck and I I meet him on the way and I say, uh, I say, hey, how are you? And uh, he said, I'm ready for snow. How about you? And I, and I laughed. Um, I laughed at that because uh, it was been it's a really it was a really hot day. It was really dry as it has been for this past week past uh, at least a week, probably more than that. Um, but then I laughed uh, after he said that. I then checked what the uh, the scripture reading was for this week, and I saw this from Isaiah, and I saw that the the first uh, the the reading kicks off with the very first line talking about rain and snow. Um, you know, recently we have had this long period of of no rain and really really pretty hot temperatures. And, uh, you know, you can tell driving around, looking around, uh, that that's been the case. Yards are looking pretty parched. Um, you know, my, my grass has been pretty crunchy underfoot for a while. And I was driving around earlier the week uh, out in the country and I could see corn that was really looking like it could use a drink. And, uh, but into this dry time, the scripture speaks of rain and snow. Something to cool the heat and bring life to a dry world. The Bible often compares water to good things from God. Most famously in John 4, when Jesus meets a woman at a well and says that he will give all who follow him living water. And once we have this water, we will never be thirsty again. Of course, the kind of thirst that Jesus is referring to isn't physical thirst. We still will need that physical water for our bodies to function. But the living water from God... It is essential to our life as the water that falls from the sky. Our souls crave God. Our souls need God as much as our bodies need water. And I'll wager that you've had times in your life, you may be going through one right now, where the water of life seems absent. When your connection to God seems as though it's been severed and God is distant from you, we commonly refer to these periods as being spiritually dry because that's how it feels. It feels as though your soul is parched, lacking what you need to have life, and it really does feel like your soul is thirsty. Sometimes we, we try to quench that thirst with other things, with entertainment, with uh, physical food and drink, but nothing really satisfies. Only God apparently present in our hearts and our minds, can do that. 
You know, uh, interesting little fact, this passage was written well before there was ever any idea of organizing the holy writings into a, a canon, right? An established set of the scriptures, the, the, the written word of God, right? It was well before this was gathered into, uh, gathered into uh, anything resembling the Bible or the Old, or the Old Testament uh, Bible, the Hebrew Bible. So when Isaiah is here talking about God's word to the people, you know, talking about the word going out to people, Isaiah's not talking about the written word like we might think. You know, we have come to look at the Bible as the written word of God. You know, I say before we read the scripture, listen now for the word of God. You know, Isaiah is talking about the living word of God. The living word of God that goes out to people and comforts and confronts them. It's God being present with us. Now, it's widely accepted that this Old Testament word of God that gives reference at several points along the way became incarnate in Jesus Christ and came out into the world in a different way than the word had before. Yet it provides that same living water. And if we are in a time of spiritual drought, it's not because God has decided to turn off the water. No, God has made an ironclad promise to us to always be with us through the power of the Holy Spirit who lives within us. The presence of God is with us always. But sometimes we choose to try and satisfy our thirst with those other things. Entertainment, food and drink, and sometimes we might not even recognize or admit that we are thirsty. When we do that, we put ourselves into an arid spiritual place, yet we might still ask of God, where are you? I don't feel the waters of your grace. Why have you abandoned me? When in reality, it is us who have moved away from God and removed ourselves from this, from experiencing this reign of God. The truth is that God's reign of grace is always falling. But we might have hidden ourselves under a proverbial spiritual umbrella. So we don't feel it. The water is all around us, but we're not drinking it. And by occupying our attention with things that are not God, we miss out on the life-changing water of grace that God is pouring out for us. But God is not content with letting us stay that way. God never stops pursuing us. God never stops trying to transform us. God's going to find ways to poke holes in the umbrellas that we try and hide under and make us recognize God's presence with us and drink in the water that God is bringing us. And like a good steady rain turns a yard that is dry and scorched into a field of lush green, so will our lives be transformed to real abundant life by the grace of God. The living water of God is always present and always available to us. But it is up to us to, to step in, to throw away the umbrella and, and let the rain fall on us. Through prayer, through studying scripture, and through acting with love toward others, we can get rid of those spiritual umbrellas and block that, that block God's holy rain. And by doing that, we allow God to transform our lives and to move us to share God's love with the world. Let us pray. Lord, we come to this time of prayer with the intention to set our minds on you and on the Spirit. Even as we are tempted to give in to worldly priorities and earthly idolatries, we yearn to know the peace that comes from surrendering to your will. Like the crowds so long ago, we want to hear the transformative and life-giving message that Jesus came to proclaim. We are eager to know your saving word, and we are bold to share our most pressing needs and deepest hopes with you. Hear us as we pray for those hard paths in our lives and in your world. This world is full of distractions to pull us away from the grace that rains down on us and gives us life. Let us be filled with your presence, be made alive by your grace, and live in you always. May your church have the energy, intelligence, imagination, and love to be an active presence for good in this world. May we be your instruments of healing in this time of pain, 
instruments of justice in the midst of suffering, and a people of holy boldness who are an example to the world. We pray for our leaders and researchers and physicians who are fighting this pandemic that is still destroying so many lives and bringing our world to a halt. And we pray that with your guidance, we may bring this pandemic to an end. And we pray for the spirit of love to reign in the hearts of all people so that we can all live a life of peace and love just the way you have always intended us to do. We pray this day for those who suffer in mind and body and in body and in spirit. May you bring healing in the way that only you can, and may we be your healing ministers in all the ways that it is possible for us to do so. We make our prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we now come to a time of offering. We've been confronted by the word of God and transformed by it, and we respond through action, through dedicating ourselves to the ministry of God, dedicating our lives as God's servants, and step one in that is, is giving ourselves over to God to let God transform us and do with us what God will. So in this time, take a moment to give ourselves over to God again. To lift, us, lift our hearts to God and let us be transformed by Jesus Christ. And we give to God all that we have in our words, our thoughts, our actions, in our gifts, gifts of possessions, which if you can still support your local congregation financially, please do so. But if you cannot, please don't try. If you can't afford to give, don't do so, for there are numerous ways in which you can serve the kingdom of God and be God's presence in this world. Friends, let us, let us give to God that which we have. Gracious God, we present to you a portion of the resources you entrust to us to steward. We give them rejoicing in the promise that you will take them, bless them, multiply them, and use them to do your will on earth as it is done in heaven. May all that we do be done with exuberant generosity in response to your overflowing goodness to us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now, friends, go... And if you feel that there's dryness in your life, throw away your dang umbrella, for there is grace raining down on you at all times. It's just up for you, up to you, to jump in and experience it. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and give you grace. Grace not to sell yourself short, but grace to risk something big for something good. Grace enough to know the world is now too small for anything but the truth and too terrified for anything but love. May God take your minds and speak through them. God, ta God take your minds and think through them. God take your lips and speak through them. God take your hands and work through them. May God take your hearts and set them on fire. Hallelujah. Amen. Thanks for worshiping with us. Let me know down in the comments if you want me to keep recording these here or go to Park Place. We'll see you next time.